Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios Tech and Reviews, and today's video is about the MSI MPG321 QRF QD for quantum dots, by the way. And what is the point of this? Well, firmware 037, that's the update for this monitor that's been out since May, which took me a while to actually update because this monitor I bricked it twice. And finally got it working after the third time. At the end of this video, I'll go how I actually managed to update it and what I did. So hopefully you won't brick your monitor by mistake. Now let's get started. So right down here, we can see my firmware version. So if you see an older firmware version, you know that's an old screen or one that hasn't been updated. I've never seen a firmware version except on one review done last month that was older than 030 version. Description is only this, adjusted EDID and optimized compatibility with NVIDIA image scaling on display port. So this is for image scaling through your GPU to actually make it work as it should. But this fixes image scaling with GPUs, which was a problem before. And apparently, Leave a comment below if you know, because I don't have a gaming console, but apparently on HDMI connection, they got rid of the 4K capability of this monitor. But mind you, 4K, what it caused is image retention using 4K scaling with some console games that are locked at 60 hertz or 60 FPS at 4K resolution. We have an update to the HDR. Hmm. Could it improve the contrast of HDR, which was actually horrible because that stupid dimming zones? Yes, I'll show that here. So I'm gonna to go to HDR and turn local dimming on by having HDR on. So I click use HDR to on. So right now, local dimming's on. Let's see what happens to turn it off. Do we see that difference? Washed out, not washed out. Nice contrasty, turned on. Local dimming, not as contrasty. Huge difference just on that light. Local dimming zones is bad. And all of a sudden, we fixed our HDR. The HDR does look HDR-like and looks wonderful. Look at those color tones. Could we also have some other improvements for gaming-related stuff? Yes, and I'll show that here as well and also quickly show the setting to use because a lot of people think game modes want to use but if you're looking for any sort of color accuracy it's not and there were some other calibration modes added though you can't calibrate those calibration modes unless you have a specific calibrator that might change obviously <laughs> but it's ridiculous when it comes to updates for this monitor let's go through professional pro modes and start with eco and see the differences User, this one's actually quite accurate. Anti-blue, yellowish, movie, that's nice and bright. Might be a bit exaggerated. Office, this makes the whites too white, so you get white crush. sRGB, kind of a little bit dull. Adobe RGB, fairly uh, bright toned. Well, display P3 is very contrasty. And calibration one, two, and three are basically the same. You can customize them and they're fairly accurate actually. Calibration mode is actually pretty darn color accurate. Your reds are deep red. Might be a little saturated, but you can calibrate with the color calibrator. And now what you can do with this calibration one, two, and three, let me show you. I'm gonna show you the software on the computer. Okay, so here is MSI True Color Calibration Utility. So I can choose calibration one, two, or three. So let's go to number one for the fun of it. And let's go, um, first of all, we can change our brightness right here. So what you want your brightness level of, that's pretty cool. Then we can actually choose next and choose our different settings. But I don't have a color meter. So if you had a color meter, this is to help you calibrate your MSI monitor. Required for calibration shows as X-Rite i1 Display Pro, which appears to be discontinued. What I wanna show you now is how to improve the gamma so you get better dark tones so you don't get black crush. We go to NVIDIA control panel. Let's open that. Or if you have AMD, same idea. We're going to be changing the gamma. 
and I'm going to use these black bars and I'm going to large these here. On this short clip, you're going to notice the white tones look kind of washed out. They are not and the black tones, there's more to it than you see because this camera is only about $700, that's with lens. It doesn't have the dynamic range to truly show what's going on. I'm going to leave this grayscale bars on my Discord chat. So all you have to do is go there and you can click on that. And now what you want for this particular monitor is to see the difference between 99% and 98% just so slightly. At least on NVIDIA graphics with my 3070, 1.2 is about the perfect point. Now, if you go higher than that for gamma, what happens is you start to wash out your white tones. And that's no good for anyone if you want the best possible image quality. So now I'm going to improve the gamma, actually increase it. Right now, this looks darker on the camera than it does in person, by the way, because my camera doesn't have as much contrast I like to see. But you can see the dark tones lightened up here. And now when I press cancel, now you can see it actually went darker. It looks dark right across here. We have more dark tones showing than previously. Adaptive Zinc is improved because there was some flickering in some games. That is gone. In fact, on my editor, if I had Adaptive Zinc on my DaVinci Resolve, I'd see flickering in the background. It would drive me absolutely bonkers. That is fixed. Now, what you're about to see for before and after isn't totally accurate because it looks like the whites are washed out. But yes, there's a huge difference between the custom calibration mode that doesn't exist on the 030. The P3 is quite nice, but a bit blue on the white tones, that doesn't exist on the calibration 1, 2, 3 modes. Let's see some differences. A little bit of this had to be simulated just to give a better idea. I did record it, it just didn't show up quite properly because it's so much brighter than out of the box settings. So even if I set the screen 100%, it still looks way brighter. Here's how this monitor looks out of the package. Now this is how the desktop should look. And this is how YouTube looks out of the package. You can see these thumbnails here. So much brighter, so much more tone and more contrast. And here's how the monitor looks out of the package if you don't change the settings. Here's how the monitor looks after we change our settings. So if you want bright tones, yeah, that new mode is awesome. Let's check that out. Now to show some different modes, here's Eco, Calibration Mode 1. I just set everything to 70% brightness. Even P3 versus Calibration 1. I hope we can see the different color tones because the red tone is a lot more vivid. So let's give you a brief rundown of why it took me so long to update to the newer firmware. Well, for one, I bricked two monitors. So the first time I did it, well, as you know, I bricked it. And that was the monitor with the dead pixels. Then they replaced the monitor for free. I shipped it. I paid shipping though, mind you. And this one had no dead pixels. It's actually like perfect, picture perfect. But it still had image retention that really showed up at 60 hertz. So if you plan to run this monitor at 60 hertz, even today, you'll have image retention if you have a locked frame rate at 60 hertz. Now what happened with the next monitor? I followed their SOP, their guide on how to update the firmware, to the T, killed the monitor again. Thank you, MSI. Uh, luckily this time they at least offered to pay the shipping back so I didn't pay another hundred and some dollars to ship it to them. Okay, so now what happened here is we finally got a third monitor and of course this means I got to test three different monitors so I got to fill out the changes of monitor because I didn't update the firmware on the first one, the second one at all until after at least a month of using it. So I know exactly what is expected of this monitor. And this is of course the third one of the same darn screen. Now with their newest update, if you have gaming OSD installed, get rid of it. So gaming intelligence, I believe it's called. Anyways, it was released August 30th does not install, uninstall the old software. So uninstall it manually, then install. Here we have the MSI Gaming Intelligence software. We can see True Color, that's your configuring software to change your settings. Then we have Mystic Light, that's for your RGB at the back end of the screen. 
175 hertz overclock if you have overclocking mode on you have your settings and that's what you want to go to for what I'm going to show here and let's go to update here are some instructions to follow use only display port to update the firmware make sure that the USB type B is connected that's your hub cable the USB hub cable this is the type B USB to type A USB that's included with this monitor of the package remove extra USB connected devices from the computer itself do not have HDMI or type C cables connected to the monitor do not remove the power cables or turn off the power while the firmware is being updated to know that the firmware is going to redisplay after however there is a bit more than this I went to the control pod in the back of the monitor I went down to settings went all the way to the bottom of settings and I chose reset lastly the last thing I had is firmware 031 rather than my other two monitors being 030 I'd figured it worked still but that tip to reset my screen my monitor was from someone in the MSI forums that actually had a successful update so maybe that was the key it takes about 15 minutes to update maybe even 20 minutes yeesh so make sure you have the time to update your monitor and you cannot shut it down make sure you turn off low power standby mode put it in never turn off the screen and never turn your computer to standby or off after leaving it idle this is eric of not bios tech and reviews thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day if you want to purchase the monitor links will be in the description as well i don't want you to break your monitor just like it wasn't fun for me to break my monitor my first one had dead pixels and that was no fun. My replacement one was like perfect. It was like, oh, seriously.